Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason. This is a Chronic Pain Tuesday video. And I suppose one of the main advantages of these sessions is they're every week, uh, every Tuesday. And even if you don't gain any benefit from the, you know, the content of the video, you can have a good laugh at my beard as it grows each week wildly and wildlier. Wildlier, if that's a word. And so eventually my beard will be out there. And um, you probably have to close your eyes <laughs> not to laugh because it's gonna be so massive. And I'll be knocking people over in the street just when I turn my head, because I won't be able to get through doorways probably. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's not the point of this session. I just thought I'd uh, pop that in. So I've done three, uh, two weeks so far, two sessions of these, the last two Tuesdays. This is the third one. And the first two weeks, I discussed chronic pain. I discussed the idea of acceptance, the idea of self-acceptance, the idea of not being uh, abusive towards yourself uh, verbally inside your head. You know, the idea of actually being kind to yourself. And I do realize that this is kind of like an alien idea the idea of being nice to ourselves even though it seems like an obvious thing that we would perhaps want to do uh, you know aspire to be nicer to ourselves to be happier to be kinder to other people maybe that would seem like an obvious thing for people to want to do but and um, sometimes not and even when perhaps we uh, are so kind to other people maybe we're not giving that kindness and love to ourselves um, so when someone says oh that's the kindest person you'll ever meet well maybe not maybe kind to other people but if they're not being kind to themselves they're not the kindest person you'll ever meet perhaps just a thought so it seems unfair to be kind to other people if you're not being kind to yourself. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And not in a selfish way, because I don't think it's selfish. I, I would say it's necessary in, in fact, actually. But I'm not gonna talk so much in this session. I think there will be other videos where I will talk and talk and talk because that is one of the things that I do um, for some reason enjoy doing just talking and talking I try and stay on the subject as much as possible if you really want to see me go off subject watch my Jason Chats vlogs uh, all over the place on them sometimes but I want to kind of stick to doing something with this session that I haven't done with previous the previous two sessions but I have done in the past, which is actually to focus on a specific way to change how you physically feel. Okay. And what I'm gonna do with this, instead of, uh, this, I'll tell you what someone might hear. Um, I'd like to show you lots of different ways to do the same thing instead of spending half an hour just showing you one technique. Um, so that's what I'll do. I'm just gonna give you, I'm gonna run through a few ideas, okay, in this session. Um, and you can test them for yourselves. Test them for yourself. See, you know, what works and, you know, see, not necessarily what works, but what works best because um, I think done correctly 
or done in maybe a different way, slightly tuned differently. I think all of them can work. Uh, I think it's just an opinion. Um, of course, we've all got our own uh, internal biases and reactions and all that stuff that go towards this. So maybe not everything's for you, not everything's for me either. So I'm going to chuck a few things at you. Now don't duck, I'm not literally going to chuck, I'm just going to give you a few ideas. Oh, And then you can maybe test them out. So I'm going to go through some of the things that I discussed last week and then give you some techniques about those things. So to start with, I talked about, oh, by the way, I hope you're well. I should have said that at the beginning. I hope you're well. I hope that you're happy. Uh, I hope things are going okay. It's Christmas time where I am. Um, it's the 20th of December today. So we're still a week away from Christmas. No, it's the 25th, isn't it? I'm thinking Christmas is the 27th. 46 years, I should have figured it out. I should remember, you know, 25th. Oh, well. And so I, I hope you're okay. I know that Christmas is a kind of an unusual time of the year for some people, um, for myself also. It's... For some people, it's a time of reflection, as is the new year. I think I reflect, <laughs> I reflect maybe three times a year. Apart from when there's reason, you know, other reasons to reflect. But three regular times of the year, I reflect on my life, maybe and where I'm going, and the past and what could have been. Uh, apart from every single day, I'm talking about you know generally three times a year on my birthday um i think about the previous year and the future year i think about my brothers i think about family members and you know time's gone past and I think about the aging process i go through a bit of an existential not crisis but just a rumble i have a little mum <laughs> have a existential rumble go on it's like and then i move on the other two times are very close to each other christmas um probably before christmas the period you know maybe christmas eve uh the week before christmas uh, so that kind of time so not on a specific day but around the christmas period and then new year's eve New Year's Eve was always, even when I was in my, uh, when I was a young man, uh, uh, Christmas, New Year's Eve was the one that I really liked the best because uh, I always seemed to w wake up in January with a, like a, a zest for life. This is when I was younger. All I want to do when I wake up now is go to, for a piss. But when I was younger, um, it used to be like, yeah, I'm going to do something. I'm going to create something. I'm going to be something. I'm going to build something. This year's going to be a good year. It's not going to be like last year. It's, I'm going to make something good and I'm going to be happy, you know. And so those just saying those three times of the year for me and i know that other people also have that similar kind of thing going on i actually wanted to make a session about um this subject actually because a friend of mine online on facebook she said she had lots of birthday wishes for her and she said, I'm not going to say who she is, but she said that um, she wished that Facebook had blocked the birthday, hadn't announced it because Facebook just announced it to all her friends, uh, as it does, because her birthday is a terrible time for her. So 
I didn't get involved. I didn't interact with this comment that she put because it was a public comment, but I don't, I wanted to ask more information because, you know, I had a few ideas on, on what she said. Cause I've had other people say stuff like that in the past. And, um, I just, you know, I thought, Oh, that's a, just kind of wonder what happened. Not in a, um, I don't know, not in a kind of gossipy way, but just, just kind of like, oh, okay. But I just had, you know, I wanted to make a session about that because I have some ideas regarding that kind of scenario. Not her scenario particularly, but the outcome of that scenario where you're not able to celebrate your own birthday, that you're willing to let an event however, however horrific the event is to spoil being able to celebrate your birthday because we live in a society where people want to wish you a happy birthday they want to celebrate your birthday even if it's just to say happy birthday you know post a, a thing on facebook or send you a card or buy you a present take you out for a drink, buy you a meal or whatever. So you're kind of removing yourself from society in a way, from society's like norms. And it's, it doesn't seem fair for the person doing it to have that. Uh, so not only have you suffered before, but you're suffering every year. And why, I don't know, why put yourself through that? But I would need to know more information. But I'm thinking about doing a session on that. Just, uh, excuse me, scratching my armpit. I forget where I am sometimes. I get so comfortable in front of the camera. Um, off, yeah, I forget sometimes. So, but I want to focus on this. First of all, last week I broke the different techniques that maybe we use naturally to... Uh, reduce chronic pain or to deal with chronic pain is um, I guess distraction distractions one I'm actually <laughs> I'll put my hands on the table but you can't see my hands so so I'm gonna put this distraction there or there you've got um, focusing on it which is the opposite obviously to distraction now focusing on it might seem like the most ridiculous thing in the world and i can understand that and it does sound like one of the most ridiculous things in the world that you would do you know when it comes to uh, a physical sensation which is very unpleasant why why would you focus on it okay well i kind of discussed that last week because you've got the distraction which is sometimes useful focusing on it which is something that most people don't do unless it's focusing on it i would say people that get the most upset about the pain of those that do focus on it but they don't focus on it in the same way as what I'm talking about they focus on not wanting it and the more you focus on not wanting the pain the more the more the pain is going to be there the more it's going to be on your mind um, because that's the way the brain is if you tell the brain don't think about a certain thing uh, it's going to be thinking about it because the brain doesn't really understand negatives, apparently. So going over and over and over, as in a memory uh, of something terrible happening, to really give it the power to overtake a special day of yours, let's say a birthday or Christmas or whatever, to allow that horrible event which never should have happened uh, or which 
maybe could have been avoided or maybe you know had, there's no avoidance i don't know it depends what it is to allow that to have power over you and your happiness it just seems a shame i'm not criticizing i'm just saying it seems a shame to allow that now you can argue about the word allowing if you like that's what you're doing so distraction that would come in the form of i don't know why i think of when i think of distraction i think of doing jigsaw puzzles and i don't even know why because nowhere and i've read a, quite a few books on chronic pain and how to help people also emotional pain uh, to help people to maybe distract themselves from what's happened and you know maybe give yourself a break from it everybody needs a rest from their brain i think i think regardless of what's going on in your mind even if it's the most positive fulfilling wonderful stuff going on in there we all need a rest <laughs> you know that's why we sleep and even though the brain's still going when we're asleep, it's a different kind of thing. It's, you know, it's dreams. It's uh, clouded. It's a little bit kind of um, less obvious than the, the less attacking, I would say. I can only talk about my own dreams. But I don't. I don't find I'm particularly critical towards myself in my dreams, not directly, as opposed to how I would be inside my head when I'm awake. So, uh, yeah, distraction, jigsaw puzzle, or whatever you want to do. So obviously I'm not going to talk about jigsaw puzzle because you know, I'm kind of looking at maybe things from a hypnotic, NLP, cognitive kind of perspective. So, a distraction technique could be as simple as focusing on a different part of your body. So, if it's your left knee that's... Uh, cause new issues you could focus on your right shoulder or there could be a part of your body that gives you pleasure and I thought you have pleasure in it that feels nice for whatever reason uh, because if there's a part of your body that is unpleasant it's always a part that feels nice it's you know the body doesn't really work in that way where it's all unpleasant Apart from perhaps, you know, in a, in some circumstances, of course, but, you know, uh, an extreme situation. But generally, if you've got one part of your body, which is a problem, then the rest of the body is okay. And the distraction part isn't so much trying to distract yourself, not like a, in a... Uh, it's not pushing it away. If you remember last week, we talked about a hose pipe, standing on the hose pipe, trying to ignore it, trying to ignore the, the water that's coming out, the, the physical sensations that's stripping. So, you know, standing on the, on the hose pipe is ignoring it, but then the pressure builds up and up and up and more and more and more. Then you take your foot off and it just, it's a bombardment of uh, suffering to be fair so distraction isn't ignoring distraction is t you know focusing as i said maybe on your right shoulder instead of your left knee you're not doing anything with your left knee you're not ignoring it you're not forcing it you know out of your head you're not doing anything you're just focusing on something else and the more of your body you focus on that isn't in pain, the less pain you're going to feel. 
So if you focus on your right shoulder and then perhaps you focus further down on your um, right forearm or big muscular arm like mine or you know all the way down to your hands so you've got this big part you know your big your right arm it's a heavy old bit of a thing to focus on compared to your left knee that's a distraction and I know that I've I've named it in a kind of in a a very obvious oh just focus on your right arm but you don't do it like that you don't just like focus on your right arm and that's it you get in depth into it you focus on how your right shoulder feels how does it feel you don't have to touch it you could just how does it feel and you can move it move it around providing it's safe for you to do so you can move your shoulder around and just notice how it physically feels when you move it and maybe you can flex a muscle tense up the arm and then let the arm relax maybe bend the arm a little bit so you don't have to lie down to do this necessarily you don't even have to close your eyes but only do it when it's safe to close your eyes so don't do stuff like this when you're driving or anything like that you do it when you're able to do it and when it's safe so that's the kind of the, the bottom line only watch or listen to my stuff when you can safely close your eyes even if you don't close your eyes so you can focus on that maybe you get to your right hand you can just move your hand around notice how the fingers feel as you move them so there's a mindfulness that you're given your right shoulder all the way down to your right hand there's a mindfulness there so you're focusing on this and when i said pleasure earlier uh, focus on a part that gives you pleasure I did realize after I said that that it might be that I was talking about your genitals and I wasn't what I mean by pleasure is when you focus on a part of your body that's healthy and that is relaxed and you know feeling just normal just normally just focusing on it normally and I don't know why this is, by the way, I don't know why, but there's a degree of pleasure within that part of your body. You might wish to actually just stroke your arm gently on your hand and you can actually feel it and you do it. I do this quite a lot actually. It might seem a bit strange, but I like the sensation of actually um, having physical pleasure, but at the same time, with mindfulness so just noticing how it feels to just touch my little finger noticing how it feels to just stroke the back of my hand and i guess this would be maybe classed as an intimate thing if someone was with you doing it with you it could be it could even be a romantic thing um but you're doing it yourself it's not there's nothing weird about it it's your arm you're feeling your arm and let's face it you know every part of your body is important in some way arms if you have your arms or if you have both your arms and hands you'll know how important they are and if you don't have your arms if you've lost them you'll know how important they were but you've managed to adjust and adapt and you know you realize how important the other parts of your body are so this is distraction i would say this is a very very vague description of distraction but it's something that can work because all you do is you extend this idea 
of focusing on your arm. And you can ch make changes. You can focus on your hand. You can imagine your hand getting warmer. You can imagine holding something warm in your hand. Uh, maybe a hot water bottle. Or maybe you can imagine your hand holding a piece of ice. But never to the extent of causing discomfort, just to the extent of changing the sensation so you can feel what it feels like in your imagination physically. So you can, it feels like there really is a piece of ice in your hand. But you only leave that there for a few seconds or maybe however long it feels comfortable, just so you can feel it. And then you just let it go in your mind in the same way as holding something warm. The whole time you're doing this, what are you focusing on? Were you focusing on your left knee? Were you focusing on your right hand, or your right arm, or your right shoulder? And there's something else you can do with this technique. Folks, I just realized there's so many different ways of doing this that I could never fit it into one video it would take hundreds and hundreds of videos. So to make this session more um, applicable and easier to use, I would say we'll round it up by doing a technique which links with your knee, or I say your knee, with which whichever part of your body it is. Now, of course, if your issue is with your right arm or right shoulder or whatever, then use your other arm, of course, uh, to do this. So we've already focused on your arm and I'm going to imagine is, yeah, so wherever the part of the body is that's causing pain, uh, that feels discomfort, there's a good chance it's already reduced now anyway. It's going to seem a bit weird and like, how can it reduce just listening to this hairy man on, on video on YouTube, but it just does. It's just the way it is. And, um, and that's fine. We don't want to knock that. I don't want to sort of complain about feeling more comfort. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to reduce it even more. Could have done this at the beginning of the video. Could have made it a five minute video. But I like to talk too much. So also I like to try and explain things. And there's more than one way to do the same thing. You can have reduced pain. You can have increased comfort. You can have uh, physical changes within you by doing nothing, by just listening to me. And you don't need to do a thing. You don't need to think about anything. You can just sit there and listen to me talking. And even if you're listening to a relaxation session uh, or insomnia session, or if, even if you're listening to uh, a vlog, Jason Chat's Saturday vlog, the association between my voice and your physical being, your physical well-being, welfare, the relaxation that naturally occurs within your body and mind whenever you hear my voice, that naturally kicks in. So I could be sitting here 
reading a book of Noddy or um, The Lion and Witch in the Wardrobe or uh, Nigella Lawson's recipes. Oh, Nigella. Sorry, I'm joking. Um, and you'll find yourself more relaxed. Although I would recommend, um, and I, I don't know why this is, in a case, it might just be me, but I find watching cookery programs really relaxing, really calming. Do you? Do you? I don't know. It's a, kind of a new thing for me because I don't, I do cook every day. Well, I don't cook every day, but I do try and make the effort to cook when I'm able to. And it's a lot of it's frozen stuff and whatever, but there's something relaxing about watching it. And I don't know why it's, um, maybe it's a distraction. Maybe it is a distraction. That is a distraction. It takes me out of myself. Maybe I'm imagining that I'm in the kitchen with, with him or her that's doing it. But it doesn't seem to matter who's doing the cooking. Of course, we all have our favourites. People that, I mean, I, um, Floyd, was it, what's that, what, Keith Floyd? He was one of my favourites. He's, he's gone now, but he, I used to find him so funny because he'd just be drinking wine the whole time that he was doing it. But he was just a right character. But he was, again, also relaxing, but a lot of his stuff, he'd be traveling around the world doing it. Um, so there was probably perhaps a bit more relaxation when it's just in a kitchen, quiet, no one else around. Um, yeah, I should do a cookery program. If only I could cook. Uh, I reckon that's why the uh, the baking challenge or the bakery program was such a big success in this country. I don't know if, if you have them in your own countries, but it's a, a program. Is it a baking challenge or something where a bunch of people all enter a baking competition and it's under a big, big white tent and they they bake and then they get so it's a bit like master chef uh if you've seen that but with cakes and they get judged and eventually they get kicked off one by one until someone's the winner and um i don't know i, I don't really watch it um i guess it's the competition part i'm not really into so um i quite like it seeing just one person make something right from scratch but when you watch um watching the bake-off yeah it's the bake-off i think it's called you don't see them start from scratch because they keep going to different participants so you don't see one person making something right the way through to the end which is kind of what i would prefer to see but that's just me so what you can do with this feeling right you got a pleasant feeling so go back to your right shoulder or, or arm or hand you just had that feeling a pleasurable feeling you can increase that feeling as well in your hand you can just allow it to feel relaxed you can allow whatever pleasure or relaxation to amplify As a count to five, each number increases it by ten. So it's ten times more relaxed, it's ten times more comfortable, ten times more pleasurable. Now, one, two, you can feel that growing pleasure and relaxation three four five just feel that feel that pleasure and what I'd like you to do 
regardless of what sensation is there, as long as it's positive, as long as it feels good, just allow that feeling to move down your hand and down your body to your midsection. And allow that feeling to move to that part of your body which was causing you problems before. Now. And just, if it doesn't go and cover that part of your body straight away, just allow it to just to pierce it gently and just allow that energy just to drip inside. The dripping positivity, the dripping energy, relaxation and pleasure to the point where it can just flow inside, filling up that part of your body all the way, including the part of your body which was fine as well. overflowing with relaxation, calmness and pleasure and allowing that feeling to continue relaxed calm And you can do this any time you choose. You can re-listen to this session any time you choose and allow that feeling to instantly reoccur. It just shows you how easily you can find ways to change how you feel without running away from it, without ignoring it. And you can do this with acceptance, knowing that there are many other ways which you can change how you feel easily and naturally. This is just one of many, many, many ways for you to feel good and for you to change how you feel, not just physically, but emotionally. Moving you forward in time to a state of comfort, positivity, looking forward to the future, a future where you have more control over how you feel. And you also have much, much more acceptance towards those things that are happening. No longer running away, but welcoming it, knowing that you have the power within you to change those physical sensations in whatever way you choose. Because this is your body, this is your mind. And you have all the tools that you need to be happy. to be relaxed, comfortable, and to enjoy being yourself, regardless of what has happened in the past, regardless of what may happen in the future, you can enjoy being you, because you are wonderful, 
you're an amazing person you've helped so many people in your life don't you deserve to help yourself yes you do so I'm going to end this session and just go back to something I said right near the beginning that is be kind to yourself it's so important be kind to yourself that's it so I'm going to go I know that these sessions have a lot of stuff in them a lot of bits and bobs <laughs> bits and bobs and there's more to this than maybe is obvious and I try and keep the same there's an idea it's a thread I try and keep that thread so that everything that I do is connected to that thread you may notice some of those things you may not but they're there and whether I'm talking about chronic pain whether I'm talking about insomnia um, whatever it may be that thread is there that connection is there so have a great day have a brilliant week the next time I do one of these will be next Tuesday which will be the day after Boxing Day so I guess that will be the 27th of December I think and uh, you have a brilliant Christmas uh, great time with yourself with family if you have family or friends um, I'll be here with Andre I will make a video on Christmas Day um, showing me myself and Andre opening our presents I've got him a couple of really groovy presents and um, I'll post that on Christmas Day that'll be the Jason Chats vlog Christmas Day I guess uh, but I'll also do one on Saturday as well which would be the New Year's Christmas Eve that's because it's Saturday so you'll get two vlogs this week sorry about that right you take care everyone uh, please leave a comment if you wish say hi if you want just say hello and please subscribe if you haven't and uh, my website is jasonnewland.com you can uh, listen to this on my website you can download the mp3 of this and everything that I've done including other stuff that's not on YouTube is also on my website so take care see you later bye